Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, November 6, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storms on us Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Pratt wrote today about a malicious RTF document that's distributed as an email attachment and that's pushing Formbook. Formbook is a little bit different in so far that it's an information stealer. It's going after passwords, so not the crypto coin miner we see all over the place these days. And as usual, Brad has plenty of indicators of compromise as well as links to the actual malware and PCAPs. And well, I didn't get quite to write about it today because it uh, sort of took me a little bit longer than expected, but I made a little bit of major update to the Honeypot script that we are using. It's now updated to the latest and greatest version of Kauri. Also some issues people had with SSH not working correctly are now fixed, so at least I hope. And it also does now fully work on Ubuntu 18.04. Of course, it still works on the Raspberry Pi and that's still probably the most popular platform people are using. But we had some requests to run these scripts in a virtual machine. That's often simpler than setting up a separate piece of hardware if you already have a server to run virtual machines. So now just grab the latest Ubuntu 18.04 LTS server and it should work just fine on that. The easiest way to learn more about this honeypot is just isc.sans.edu slash honeypot.html. And search.org released an interesting warning regarding an odd behavior of office documents on the Mac. You are able to disable all macros without notification, which seems to be a secure settings. This way, macros will just not run. You will not get the annoying pop up boxes notifying you of macros, so you shouldn't really have the ability to run these macros. But apparently, Microsoft left out XLM macros, not XML. XLM macros. This is a fairly old format. It came from Microsoft Excel 4 and well, it's still supported. And if you disable all macros without notification on the Mac, what actually happens is that XLM macros still run and there is no notification. And then to make things worse, these XLM macros can be incorporated in silk files and these silk files are not opened in protected view. So essentially the user can open a document and the macro will run without any warning and execute arbitrary code. Cert.org has confirmed this behavior in fully patched Office 2016 and Office 2019 for the Mac. You sort of have two options here as a workaround. The first one is to block all silk files on email and web gateways. The extension would be SLK. Also, well, you could just not disable all macros with notification. This way you will still get a notification and that way the user has a chance to not run these files. So the correct setting would be disable all macros with notification which in this case is slightly more secure. And probably some of the simplest exploits, and sadly it still works, is the idea where you just display pop-up boxes in a browser, making it essentially unusable, and then ask the user to call a support number and charge the money to get their browser back. Now, uh, this is not a new trick. Browsers have gotten better in making it easier for users to recover from this, but currently a uh, vulnerability in Firefox is exploited this way. Fairly simple sort of JavaScript that's being used here and that's very typical for this type of vulnerability to display a pop-up with a login box. 
Yes, all you have to do is open the task manager and kill Firefox. But of course, that's something a lot of people don't necessarily know how to do. Well, one of, sort of the core libraries on many Unix and BSD based systems uh, to do compression is libarchive. It's used in tools like CPIO, TAR and CCAT among others. And well, uh, version 3.3.3 of uh, this library suffers from a use after free vulnerability. So expect many Unix BSD based systems to be affected. Uh, now Ubuntu 18.04, I just checked, it appears to be using the version 3.2.2 of this library, CentOS 7.3.1.2. So all of them are potentially vulnerable. The advisory only talks about 3.3.3 specifically being vulnerable. And for example, BSDs like OpenBSD offers uh, this particular version. Updates should be around the corner. There is no real exploit for it yet, just a description of the vulnerability. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.